What up, players? Wolboss Tay of this mug finishing our corn warrior. Oh, doesn't he look fantastic? Today we do the highlights. So we're highlighting the trim on the cloak. We're highlighting the cloak itself, giving some wood grain to this beautiful halberd of ours, and doing some work on the trim of the armor, giving it some little pointy, spiky parts to uh, show that this guy is a very spiky guy and he's into spikes. Spikes are cool. And of course, we're doing the horns. Had a little bit of trouble with them, but you guys probably probably will have a little bit of better time with them. And hey, in the end, Seraphim Sepia is uh, the great equalizer. Helps us all out. So, let me tell you what colors we worked with today. In no particular order, Agrax Earthshade, these are the colors you want to have next to you. Seraphim Sepia. Screaming Skull. I have Chaos Black, but if you've got the new Abaddon Black, that's, that's fine. Mechanicus Standard Gray. Wait, when did I use this? I think I used this for the base. Okay, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you really need that one. Steel Legion Drab. We use that one a lot. Administratum Gray. We use that. Xandri Dust. Dawnstone? Did we use Dawnstone? Again, this, is, this might be for the base too, so I just have it nearby. You never know, you might need it. More Fang Brown in case you make any mistakes on the, the Halberd. Rakarth Flesh, yeah, we do use that. And uh, for the gold, to, to give that a little bit of pop, we use our Trifecta, Balthazar Gold, Gihine's Gold, and Auric Armor Gold. So those are all the colors you're using for this video. And I say at the beginning, you don't have to work it up to this standard. If you're happy with your Warrior of Corn after part two, then that's totally fine. But look at how much detail and how crisp it is after doing this third step. And hey, if you assembly line it, do it all through your army, um, it will look that much more awesome. And uh, best of luck out there. Blood for the Blood God, Skulls for the Skull Throne. Alright, we're back. Welcome to the last part of the video where we're going to finish our Chaos Warrior of Corn here. The first thing we're going to do is, th this video is all about highlights, so if you're not, uh, if you've got a bunch of these guys to do or you just don't feel like getting up to this point, then don't worry. It, it looks fine. Believe me, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Don't worry. Eshin Gray is the first paint we're going to use and this is to highlight the black areas. So. Talking about on the strap here. We're just kind of painting it um, all on one side so that you still see the black kind of shining or kind of in, you know, around the highlights. So just take it where the, where the light reflects. And then we're going to paint the tips of this fur here. Now you can dry brush it. I found the dry brushing works equally as well, but since I'm going to use this as a as a painting tutorial, I will ooh mold lines. I will hand paint half and then dry brush half. So as you can see, I'm going from about halfway down each of these little fur pieces, trying not to get the the lower part of it because that's where the shadows are going to live. I've always found that highlighting your models, although it takes time, you end up with a, such a great looking end result. Like with my uh, Isabella von Karstein, or my Krell models, there's no way that I could have done those models um, any justice if you don't highlight them. Now I'm gonna take a flat, br flat brush, or a small dry brush, not a flat brush, and this is from Citadel, it's one of their products, but uh, you could also do this with an old brush that you, if, if you don't like it anymore, you just cut the bristles to this certain lower stubby length. It just needs to be, kind of have a lot, so be pretty thick. So you want to get one of, a, one of your larger brushes and you don't have to trim them down, but I found that when you do trim them down, it makes it a lot easier to dry brush, you have more control. If you have a brush that you're not using anymore and it's a big 
fatter brush like you'll need for dry brushing. What I found is that the, the hairs are all split, so you don't have as much control. With a dry brush, control is super important because you're going all over the place. So you just basically dip the tip into some paint and then brush off, you wanna brush off like 80 to 90% of the paint onto your hand when, or a piece of Kleenex. When you don't see it anymore, then that's when you have enough. Now I remember when I first got into the, hob the, the painting side of the hobby and I was looking up all these tutorials online, they didn't really have any um, any video guides, there was no real YouTubers doing anything back when I got into the hobby and or back into the hobby in 2009 or 2008 I mean I started posting videos on YouTube in 2009 but I was um, I was painting avidly since 2008 ish I got back into the hobby and um, yeah I, I had no idea how to dry brush nobody told me how to dry brush so we're gonna move on to administratum gray so I had to kind of learn it all by myself and I remember seeing or not learn it by myself but I had to actually look online and see what I could find just like articles or or guides that people would write in the forums and stuff and people were trying to describe dry brushing to me and they're saying how you have to take off like 80 to 90 percent of the paint and I was like that's just wasting money paint's expensive son I didn't understand that yeah you need to if you don't wipe off that 90 percent of the paint then it uh, ends up getting all into the shadows and the recesses and the dry brush is just to give the hint of your color rather than making it a very prominent thing on the model. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm filming this at about like nine o'clock in the morning. I just woke up, summer vacation, my voice is kind of groggy. So the administratum gray really starts to bring out some lightness, so that's kind of what we want. I'm gonna do it with a dry brush. Again, I'm wiping off 90% of the paint onto my hand. And then when you're putting the dry brush on and you're getting lighter and lighter, you wanna kind of stick to the top and work down like that. And then when you've, when you've done that and you're happy with it, then you kind of move it move it around. But if you do, if, if you're just brushing all over the place, then it's gonna be harder to get the effect that you want because the danger, uh, the, you have that danger of the paint getting into the shadows where you don't want it to be. That looks pretty nice. So there's a difference between controlled painting on each little layer and dry brushing it. You might not be able to tell, there's not that much, but when um, you look at the model closely, one side is a little bit dustier and the other side, there's a little bit more control on where each of the pieces go. It's really up to you. What, what, what do you want to put the time into painting? You know, it's, it's all about you, baby. <sighs> okay, so now we're gonna work on highlighting the cloak. We're gonna take some Steel Legion Drab. Shake that baby up. Paint it onto, paint a little bit onto our wet palette. And then, because we're doing highlighting, most of what we do, you want to put onto your wet palette. You want to thin the paint down as much as possible. So what I'm aiming for are these very obvious raised areas of the cloak. Now the reason we shake our paint is because we want to mix the pigment up inside. But some colors like Steel Legion Drab no matter what, they just kind of be have this like very watery kind of texture to them that you don't see in a lot of the older base paints or what they used to be known as were foundation paints. The old Steel Legion Drab was called Kemri Brown and that one went on really, really nice. If 
uh, not a little thick might have been the only problem. The reason why I like to use brown as, as a cloak color is, well, for one thing, I've seen it done on a bunch of different Chaos Warriors of Corn that I've seen online, and it's it doesn't detract from the robe, or, or from, the, from the armor. The cloak doesn't detract from the armor in any way. Like with the, if for those of you who've seen my How to Paint a Chaos Warrior of Zinch, his cloak was actually bright red, I believe. No, was it red? Was the trim red? Anyways, it was it was a very striking color, and uh, I think my Nurgle I did in brown too. But I, you want to play to the strength of what the the model looks like, and when you put a whole unit of these guys on the table, the most prominent thing or the thing that's going to be the most eye-catching for anybody walking by, which is what we want, right? The main goal of, of all of us is to paint models that people walking by will say, Oh my gosh! What the heck? That is beautiful! And then they'll stop and ask you what colors you use and make you feel good about yourself and all the time you're spending painting your little plastic monster man. Um, for this guy, the, the thing that you want people's attention to be on is the armor. So we're spending a little bit of time on the cape here, but really it's the armor. And that is what we're going to do our final details on next. So for the armor, speaking of the armor, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of detail that I, sh I, I should have suggested uh, earlier. And we're going to be painting on like a little bit of gold etching. So we're going to use is our goal to start with and you want a small edged brush to do this because it's pretty fine work. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to find the sharp edges like any corners of the red armor and we are going to paint straight lines coming out of it at the diagonal. So kind of like the eight-pointed star you want a straight like a like a sh shaft of a, or a blade of a spear or like a knife, sword point, anything that'll make you think something sharp and pointy. I knew something sharp and pointy, war boss. Lewis, don't be gross on my channel. I just came by to ask you when we're going to the beach again. You see, I've pimped out my corpse cart, and I'm going to pick up a bunch of hot chicks the next time we go. Well, funny thing you ask that, Louis, because the lady boss said that she would like to go to the beach on Thursday when she's off of work. And in the filming of this video, that is in two days. Tuesday today, isn't it? Yes, master. It is Tuesday. Well, that's okay then. It gives me just enough time to see if I can put some suspension on this baby. Maybe give it some 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 chicken base. All right, you do that, Lewis. I'm also gonna go and. Make sure that I've got some nice new threads. My bathing suit the last time we went was riding up, riding up a little too high for comfort. Well, Lewis, that is because most people do not wear the Borat swimsuit to the beach. That was something he did. For the shoulder pads here, I'm going to add uh, spikes jutting up. Or I'm going to paint a design of spikes jutting up. Kind of like teeth. Ooh, like world eaters. <gasps> Ooh, wow. I just, just made a connection there. In fact, hmm, Hmm. I'm 
having a great idea. I'm gonna paint these spikes, these teeth, like, nah. You know what? Let's let's not let's not let's not get crazy. Let's not get crazy. I was thinking I'll paint them like all over the shield, but then we'd be here forever. I have been here forever. Lewis, why don't you? No, never mind. I don't want to make you a sandwich. I wasn't gonna ask you to make me a sandwich. Lewis, you're getting too much camera time in this video. Nobody's heard from you in weeks. All of a sudden, you show up in my beach video, and now here you are, talking and jabbery. I'm sorry. I'm just appealing to my fan base. Gehenna's gold is the next color we're gonna paint on. Oh, and like I said in the last one, you're gonna need to shake this up if you've been leaving it um, in the uh, sitting dormant position for a while. What a fan base. That's when people like you. Oh. People like you too, Igor. Three. Somebody, somebody wrote me a comment saying that I should come up with like a t-shirt or a bumper sticker that says Igor is my homeboy. That was like a picture of a Crip Ghoul's face giving a thumbs up. I think that would be a brilliant idea, Master. There should be a cat in it too, because people love cats. All right, so I'm not sure how much value this is this is going to give to you. You might not think there's any value in this uh, painting all this extra gold detail on Auric Armor Gold, but personally, I like to think of. I was talking to my lady friend about this last night. Um, we we're talking about the viability of like why people paint their models to a certain degree and um, I think the great thing about doing this extra work is that it shows your commitment to doing artistic pieces not just uh, plain pieces so so this is really for you die-hard fans out there. Fans of chaos, I mean, not fans of me or anything like that. You don't have any fans! Get out of here, Warbot. Uh, <laughs> Lewis. You're a very unpopular Warboss. Nobody likes you! Right, that's enough of him. Oh yeah, so thanks to everybody who suggested the mini wargaming thing. Like I said, my um my my phone, my computer, like the 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 router, the internet over here is just really really poor, so it's always cool to to get like messages from people about what I should check out on YouTube. All right, there we go. So, as you can see, doing a couple of highlight colors, like starting with the Balthazar gold, and then going up to Gehenna's gold, and finally, Auric armor gold. It gives your gold details just that little extra bit of, of punch, which reflect the light, look really nice. And um, yeah, you should be very happy with that. Even if you don't do this fine, fine little spike details, I think you should definitely edge the armor with this gold because it'll 
it'll uh, give you a really nice effect and not just have your model look like every other gold or a red model on the table just for fun. I'm gonna line the uh, entire top part of the rim here. All right, so now we're moving on to the last part, and that is, or second to last part, that is the um, wood of the halberd. Now, wood grain is a, it's a tricky thing to do, but I found that a really cool, effective way of doing a good wood grain is kind of like we've been doing. You take more fang brown, you paint it onto the wood, then you um, wash it with. Agrax Earthshade, which is what we've done. Now we're going to take Steel Legion Drab and Xandri Dust. These are going to be the two colors we're going to use. You can go higher if you want. You can go all the way up to Rackarth Flesh. Those are the three colors that highlight what I call the soft brown. So um, anything that you paint or base coat in Steel Legion Drab or you want to have that almost like creamy color. This is how, what you do. Now, when you paint it in the wash, what you, sh what you should see with the wash dry are these lines that show up and that's gonna be the grain, the pattern that you follow. Now, if you're not comfortable with painting straight lines, it could be that your, uh, your grip is not, str is not uh, stable. So, using a piece of cork or a something to hold your model on like I do is one solution to that. We're just bracing your wrists together. It's another solution. So I've already made a pretty thick um, part in there. So if you do make a mistake like that and you, sh you s make a really thick smudge, don't get discouraged because um, you're just going to cover that up in, in the next step. If you are a perfectionist though, and you really want to get a very cohesive look, even if you mess up, then an option that may, might make you feel better is <clears throat> going back over it with Morn Fang Brown. The reason I'm not starting with Morn Fang Brown is because I want to leave that Morn Fang brown, that reddish brown in the, in the shadows. So that's the first part. Here we go. A little bit of adjustment there. The next part, like I said, Xandri dust. And as with all highlights, we want to paint this within the first highlight. So looking at this fat mistake that I made, this big splotchy part right over here, I'm just going to paint right through the center of it and see if I can get a little bit straighter. Once you've got that straighter part in there, the mistake that you made kind of disappears. This is where your ability to paint within the lines as a kid will really come into play. Who knew? Coloring with crayons and painting within the lines would be a valuable thing for your Warhammer hobby one day. Yeah, we're gonna go with Rackard Flesh as the last piece now, and I'll show you how close it should look. There we go. I think I have to double check all my videos. I think my iMovie's been uploading some of them in like a funny order. Sorry if that's if that's happened. Somebody pointed out that that's happened in the Iron Hands video. I've noticed when I'm uploading my clips too that, um, yeah, that's what that's what it looks like. So I gotta go back and figure out what to do. It's been so long, like rendering and uploading these, that you now I want to make sure that they're in the right order so people who actually sit through them get a good experience. Okay, so there's there's our wood grain. To tie everything together now, we're gonna take some Agrax Earthshade. We're gonna water it down. And that is going to be 
it for the wood. Agrax Earthshade here. So what I'm gonna do to water it down is I'm gonna take my brush, a larger brush, and I'm going to dip it in water. Then with water still on the brush, I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna dip it into the paint pot. And voila. So the second coat of Agrax Earthshade will tone down all of the highlights that you did. And because it's watered down, it won't do it too much, but it will take that harshness off the rack art flesh and blend all the colors together. I still think this one little area is a little bit janky, so when this dries, I'll take a little bit of Mornfang Brown and just paint it in so it's just not as thick. I'd love to know what, what you guys do for wood, for wood grain. Um, wood grain is a, is a fine art, like highlighting that it's, you know, it's hard to, hard to figure out how to do well. Okay, moving on. We're gonna take Steel Legion Drab and we're going to paint up the boots. We're gonna highlight them. The reason we're using Steel Legion Drab a lot is because it's a nice neutral, like I said, a soft, soft brown. So, not that harsh. We're not going to go any higher than this, but it is a really nice color. So we're just painting it onto all the highest areas here. But yeah, like I said, I emailed Matthew from Mini War Gaming. So hopefully, it'll be cool if I get to work with them. If not, then hey, I can still enjoy their videos. Probably gonna have to change my tutorial length though. They probably don't want, you know, hours and hours of footage. I think that's my niche though. It's my niche. It's what makes my channel different from like girl painting or bi painted who do, or like, less at awesome paint job. I love all their videos. Um, and I love how, God, their camera work is so much better than mine. I'm trying the best I can. I know, Igor. It's just, sometimes I'm painting and it gets out of focus. And because of the way my painting table is situated, um, my camera, or my models often turn sideways so that it can face me. Uh, such is life, you know? All right, last thing we're gonna do is the horns. Now, the horns, I've been saving because we're going to need to be a, a little bit, we're gonna need to think about them, the horns a little bit. We're gonna start with Zandri Dust, which is a little bit more of a brown color than Rackard Flesh was, but bringing it back up from the Agrax Earthshade, I find it's easier to start with here. Andrew dust because it does have a little bit of a creaminess to it. So I'm gonna do kind of a, like a dry brush, what I did with the dry brush, but instead of using the bigger brush, I'm using my detail brush here. So make sure you wipe off most of the paint. And I'm gonna go from an angle, so hopefully the paint doesn't get caught in the middle as much. Ah, it did, it did, it did, it did. that's okay. Adventures in painting. So it did get caught in the middle and um, these ridged horns, I swear, gonna make me go crazy. But I'll let that brush take a break and use another brush. But I do like the color, this Zandri Dust yellowish. It's a little bit more yellowish, maybe not brown, but like yellowish than Rackarth Flesh, and I think that's good. Yeah, instead of going going up and down, looks like what you're gonna need to do is go follow the ridges instead. So I'm 
painting the sides and then I'm gonna follow follow the lines of the ridges so just like with our with the wood grain you're going with the grain and not against like shaving okay, for the front though I'm just gonna dry brush it Woo! all right like I said you make a mistake we're gonna keep on trucking going to use Screaming Skull. This is the toppermost of the poppermost that we're going to use as our highlight color. And as such, we're going to stick to just a couple of places. Now when you look at your model, the tip of the horns is always the most prominent. And the edge, just a little bit down. On the outside, it's this part that catches the light, so that's the part that we're going to, we're going to paint with, with the Screaming Skull. And we're going to follow the ridges. Try to get it on the lines, but if not, that's okay. Tabletop quality, tabletop quality. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> All right, now to finish it off, we're not gonna go back to Agrax Earthshade, but we're gonna tie the colors together with Seraphim Sepia. So this is one of those rare instances where I base coat, I shade, or I use a wash, then I highlight and I highlight. We highlighted two steps, and then now we're doing a second shade. And the second shade is really to tie the colors in rather than to punch out where the shadows are, which is what the Agrax Earthshade did. The Agrax Earthshade showed us where to, where to color, or where the, where the shadows were, whereas this Seraphim Sepia shows us, or uh, really works for us by tying, tying the colors together. After this, if you want to re-highlight, you are totally free to. I'm going to leave it because most of the horn ivory pictures that I've seen where horns have been used as decoration they are not like super gleaming and especially if you're using guys like the Warriors of Chaos here they might shine their skulls their decorative skulls but I don't think they really maintain their horns on their helmets and it also gives this really nice dirty dirty look to it that um, means that it won't detract the, the horns on the helmet won't detract from the rest of the model it'll just add a nice focal point so there's our guy I am going to base him up but this is pretty much the end of uh, the end of this video series oh you know what we need to do we need to color out these eye holes last thing you're gonna do if you haven't done so already just to kind of get rid of that black gulf in there is you want to take some kind of black paint so I'm gonna use chaos black you can also use Abaddon black or whatever black you're using and we're just going to paint it into the eye slits make our guy dark and mysterious cavernous deep brooding eyes there we go and that's it so thanks for watching everybody that's how I would paint a corn warrior there are many ways of painting your bloodthirsty corn warriors but this is mine and I uh, hope you enjoyed the series latest players